Welcome to the Speaker Spotlight Series. I'm Molly Inhoff. I'm here with Marshall Loeb, President, CEO, and Director of East Group and Culver House alum. What brings you to campus today, Mr. Loeb? I uh, got invited to come speak to the real estate class, which just finished up, and then the Real Estate Society today. So fun being back. Um, so when you were an undergraduate, you studied accounting. Um, how did that shape your career? Um, great business background to have, and that I was an accounting major here, went to work with Ernst & Young Birmingham, and kind of a business backbone. Great training, great people that I worked with, a lot of fun. Uh, and then, so it gave me that foundation, and then went back and got an MBA and realized I had a passion for real estate. So the, but accounting gave me a good head start towards business. And you got your MBA at Harvard, correct? Correct. Another um, Crimson and White school. Yes. What was that transition like from a state school to an Ivy League? Um, it was probably a bigger transition going from a small town in Alabama, being Tuscaloosa, or a small town in Mississippi, which is home, to Boston and yes, kids from sure. all over the world. So it was a great experience in terms of eye-opening and meeting people from everywhere. Uh, but uh, after a little bit of time, I realized I was overwhelmed at first. Probably, you know, everybody felt like they'd gone to a big prep school, uh, Ivy League school, had worked on Wall Street, and you know, I'd been from Birmingham to, I'd been up and down I-20 most of my <laughs> life, but realized as we started getting grades that I had okay grades to good grades in my classes and that Alabama gave me that foundation that Harvard wasn't as big a transition as I'd made it out in my mind to be. Yeah, for sure. Which is fun. Um, so what is your fondest memory of your Culver House experience while you were uh, here? Probably like everybody. People, great friends that I still stay in touch with, walking across the quad to come to classes and things like that when it wasn't like a rainy day today. But, yeah. uh, yeah, and great professors, so it's a fun fun four years here. Definitely. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about your career path. Okay. Um, how has serving in multiple executive positions at various companies shaped your perspective on leadership? It's been, I've been lucky in that I've worked on different types of real estate from that end and in different geographies. So I've gotten to travel. I still get to live at the, in the South, which is home, but I get to travel all over the country. Uh, and then as your career moves along, and I think everybody deals with that to some degree, I went from being hands-on, whether you're in real estate or marketing or finance, to managing people. And yeah. at first, most people m miss the hands-on because you got into real estate because you like real estate. You got into banking. But I think if you can, what's been rewarding, it's almost like being a professor in a way. You can help people build their careers. And so I think from the leadership perspective, it's been fun to see this, it's more fun, it's almost like you're, my kids, see the successes they have and the success as a public company, we get lots of immediate feedback in the terms of our stock prices to how it's going, but yeah. it's been fun to see the success there and you feel good for your shareholders. Yeah, Hopefully, sure. if it all goes well. Um, so with managing a company and people, um, you're going to face obstacles. So yeah. uh, tell us about a time you were faced with a difficult company decision and how you addressed the situation. Probably two two answers, I'd say. One, at some point, the economy, you know, you're not going to have a great economy your whole career. It's going to be a bad economy at some point. We were over leveraged. I was at a retail REIT, so enclosed malls, open air centers. We were over leveraged in the last downturn, like 08. Yeah. And so we, you, we brought in joint venture partners. We raised equity, senior management team. We decided to try to not lay off many people as, as best we could and all took a pay cut then. So and you just kind of live and, and know that's going to happen and you wait for the economy to turn. The other, probably the hardest part, harder than that, is just when realizing sometimes you may have people misslotted. And so it's always probably an easy decision to figure out but because we're all human, hard to let someone go. And I have to tell myself, look, that's why I'm an employee here too. And sometimes you just have to make decisions it feels terrible and you get through it and hopefully you try to be humane and help them find the, the right fit for them but that's the other if you said what don't you like about your job that's the, that's part of it too but that you know you take the good days with the bad and how how like challenges like those how have those shaped you you certainly want to give you know i guess the you want to through the downturn it's helped me our we've issued at our company issued a lot of equity our Target debt is 35%. We're down below 19% today. 
because you realize if you're at 35 percent things get bad you're not going to stay there so from the debt side and then people wise i think always giving that feedback to you know how kid our team it goes both ways diplomatically worded polite constructive criticism yeah. is welcome anytime don't just come tell me I'm an idiot, but say, hey, can we look at things a different way? So hopefully, if something doesn't work at the end of the day, you've tried about everything along the way, rather than most people, and myself included, don't like conflict. So you put it off to the very end, and then people are surprised, and it's just not healthy for anybody. Yeah. So yeah. I think if you can manage your way through it, and, and a lot of times you, you, you can avoid the bad outcome, and somebody moves to a different you know, position on the team and it works out great. Yeah. Um, after working in multiple companies in different capacities, what made you return to East Group in 2016? Um, I got really lucky in the way, and maybe like most of your career, you'd love to say it's planned, but the shopping mall company that I mentioned, I was Columbus, Ohio for about a decade. Um, I, we used to kid with our CFO and say the day we get bought out is the day we know we've done our job. So we were getting bought out. They had, I was our chief operating officer, the people that were acquiring us had two COOs, so I figured the third probably wasn't the charm. And so you know it's going, and I was with my son at college orientation. I'd interned at East Group between years in business school, come back, work there, and my old boss called and said, hey, I'm retiring, why don't you come back? So it's not often you get to start as an intern and then go back to your former company. I said it felt, I put in my, president letter that year it felt like a, a Disney movie I had everything but the dog in it type yeah thing. so I got lucky and it was has been a fun chance to come back yeah I bet that was nice being able to return yeah, to that I'm, I'm lucky fortunate um so tell us about the opening of East Group's Western Regional Office and your role in that um we were all based and we're still today our headquarters is Jackson Mississippi I had Arizona California which is about as easy to travel to from Jackson as you would expect. You know, yeah. Four planes later, if they were all on time, I'd make it. And it was also my job to help us grow in those markets. So one day our CEO, the, the one I just mentioned that retired, said, we're getting so big we're going to need an office out there. And I saw that as my window and the kids were little and decided, hey, well, we're going to move. And we ended up going to Phoenix. and finding temporary office space, then permanent office space, and told a good friend I was working with that I was doing that, that I, I really went to John's, his name, tell John I was leaving, and he's like, that sounds great. I want to go with you. So six months later, we figured out a way for him to be our number two person. So for a few years, we had Arizona and California. Oh, so wow. it was like a well-funded startup, maybe, to kind of go out there yeah. and, and do that great experience. Yeah, That's so cool. Um, so you sound like you really enjoy your job. Um, what makes you look forward to the work week? Um, I, yeah, I do like my job. I'm lucky. I like the challenges. Real estate's fun. You know, every city's different. Every part of every city. You know, you picture Tuscaloosa, north, south, east, west are going to be a little bit different. Buildings on different corners are different a lot of times. And then the people, real estate, maybe every industry does that, attracts a lot of larger than life colorful personalities, mm -hmm. some you'll like, some you won't over the course of your career. But, I, you know, it's been fun, fun cycle and, and fun to, and I like if it helps from the, if I tie it back to Culver House, I realized after working at Ernst & Young, I was, and I liked accounting, you get more and more specialized. I've said I felt like I was going through a funnel. I started as an accountant, I became a tax accountant, and it's the way they work, which makes sense, and then you get specialized even within tax. And I realized the first year of my MBA, um, it was finance, it was marketing, it was accounting, it was every course I took while I was at Culver House, all in one industry. Yeah. And I realized it took me a bit to kind of realize, or you think, especially kids struggle with, you're always supposed to have that answer and you're 20, 21 and you haven't really worked yet. Have I realized I was a generalist and real estate's a great generalist industry. We do construction, so manufacturing, you market, you negotiate, you do all of those things. So it fits my interest, which maybe are, are more broad than deep is another yeah. way to say it. Yeah. You get a good variety out yeah. of it. Yeah, and I, you know, you jump around, you do a little bit of everything in any given day, depending on what phone call or email you get. That's great. Um, what do you like to do in your free time? 
Um, let's see, I've been a bad golfer for decades, <laughs> read, run, uh, you know, keep up with my kids, you know, the, the normal things, follow Alabama athletics, things like that, so all that's fine. All right, um, and last question, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give to yourself when you were a student? Um, I think, you know, I, I think maybe as I touched on, I think as a student you feel pressure to have that answer to what, you know, as a senior, what are you going to do when you graduate? And I would say, I felt that, and it probably was undue pressure, and that your life throws you, it opens opportunities, and I was about to say curveballs, but changes, and be flexible. You know, I've, I love the South and where I live, but I've lived in Ohio, I've lived in Boston, I've lived in Phoenix, be open for new opportunities, and your career is probably not going the way you plan it now, or if it is, the think of the three fates and the spinning wheel in mythology, they're going to spin your life in a different direction. So I probably struggled and thought I had my career planned and it looks nothing like that, but it's worked out great and it, you never know when it's going to make a left or right turn along the way. So be open to that flexibility. Yeah, as a student, that's great to hear. <laughs> so <laughs> You're welcome. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today Thanks. and thank you for tuning into the Speaker Spotlight series and be sure to follow us on social media at Culver House UA. Thank you.